Hello, I am Zahir Alam. Welcome you all on Frankly Speaking. Our today's guest is Martin Davidson, Chief Executive of British Council, who was appointed in April this year. Viewers, British Council are the, is the UK's international organization for cultural relations and educational opportunity. Martin Davidson is making his first visit to Bangladesh following visits to Pakistan and Nepal. In his role as head of the British Council worldwide, Martin brings extensive experience of international cultural relations to lead the organization in its global purposes of building mutually beneficial relationships between people in the UK and in the 190 countries, including Bangladesh, in which British Council currently works. He has been working in British Council since 1984. Welcome, Mr. Martin Davidson, on Frankly Speaking. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you for inviting me on today. Yes, sir. Our pleasure. Uh, Mr. Uh, Martin Davidson, uh, uh, I mentioned that uh, you appointed the chief executive in April this year. That's right. So after assuming your responsibility very recent times, why you have selected to visit Bangladesh uh, within the short span of time? Well, as you say, um, I've only been chief executive for five months, um, and during that time I've had to spend quite a lot of time in London, uh, understanding the organization and uh, talking with uh, our key stakeholders. So this has really been my first opportunity for an overseas visit. And I wanted that visit to come to a region which, first of all, I don't know. Um, and so this is my first visit to Bangladesh, and it's a real pleasure to be here. My personal background is in China, so I have worked in China for 15 years. Um, so I wanted to come to somewhere I didn't know. And I wanted to come to somewhere where uh, I believe that our work is more important than ever has been before and where I'm wanting us to put more focus, more attention in the next few years. Uh, uh, whom you consider the key stakeholders in your uh, program or activities? First of all, the key stakeholders are the people who take part in it. And here, the key stakeholders are the Bangladeshis who take part in our programs. Um, also, um, the uh, Bangladesh government and other senior organizations here. But of course, also, uh, we're an organization which creates links between the UK and other countries. And we have key stakeholders in the UK. Um, those include our foreign office, but they also include the universities, the cultural organizations, ordinary uh, young uh, people in Britain, um, as well, indeed, as some of the diaspora communities. One has to remember a very large number of uh, people of Bangladeshi origin who are in the UK, and they're part of our stakeholder group as well. So in this program particularly, do you have any, um, any specific plan to uh, undertake or initiate in Bangladesh from British Council's point of view? We've announced a, a number of things recently. One, that we will be reducing uh, uh, activity in Europe, and we are going to be reducing by 30% the amount of money we spend in Europe in order to give us resources to put into other parts of the world. And this region um, uh, is one that we hope to put more resources into. My job is not to decide what that should be. Um, we have experts um, who know the country far better than I can, especially since I've only been here 24 hours. Um, so I will be, part of my purpose is to talk to them to understand the sorts of things we should be doing. And I've just come from a meeting with the uh, British High Commissioner um, to talk through precisely those, those, those ideas. What is it? What is the contribution the U British Council can make to the wider relationship between the UK and Bangladesh? So uh, what are, you, we, you have some global exchange program we don't. Indeed. So um, uh, in this stage, uh, what type of program, global partnership program, you are going to introduce? Well, the sort of things that I think are going to be uh, relevant uh, to, to Bangladesh um, are things like uh, school links. And I would particularly like to increase the understanding of young people in the UK have of Bangladesh, their experience of Bangladesh, but also the experience and understanding people in Bangladesh have of the UK. Part of our purpose is to uh, change some of the preconceptions and maybe one can even say prejudices. What type of preconceptions? Um, there are many preconceptions. Um, I think if you talk to uh, my, my own preconceptions, I, I arrived in Dhaka yesterday. Um, so w what was in your mind about Bangladesh? Uh, I suppose uh, one knows, I knew that it was a, quite a poor country. Um, in reading in the newspapers, you read all the time about uh, the floods, and it rains a lot, um, that it's very crowded, um, uh, that uh, it is a place where, which is unstable, 
Um, all those sorts of things which you get through a, 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 a reading of the media. Uh, what did I find? I arrived yesterday, the sun shone. Uh, there was no traffic on the roads. Okay. Um, everybody I've met has been enormously friendly, but really importantly, everybody I've met wants a better and stronger relationship between Bangladesh and the UK. And that, that's for me fantastic, it is the environment in which we can really do something which is useful. Now, before leaving uh, London, I found that you said that uh, this region particularly uh, is very important for yes. the UK. So why you consider Bangladesh especially is important for? Um, I think there are two or three reasons. Uh, first of all, there is a very long historical uh, cultural link between Bangladesh and the UK. Um, there's a very strong economic link between Bangladesh and the UK. Um, and that is true in other parts of the region. As you said earlier, my visit has included Pakistan and Nepal. And both those countries also have uh, similar links. But also, uh, I think we have to be aware that there has been a, um, a growing distrust between the ordinary people in the UK and the ordinary people in Bangladesh. And that has been caused by uh, a lot of what you read in the newspapers about extremism, growing extremism, the problems of terrorism, uh, the issues in the Middle East. Um, I see our job as being to rebuild those, that, those, those levels of trust, those links, those bonds of trust between Bangladesh and the UK. Um, and Part of my purpose of being here is to see in what way we can actually uh, rebuild the, that, that trust, which has been, I don't think it's been broken, but I think it's been stretched. Can, can you identify the reasons for mounting this trust between? Um, I think that there are uh, a number of reasons. Uh, of course, the political situation, the international political situation is part of that. Um, but also, I think that uh, uh, young people in the UK do not have a sufficiently uh, sophisticated understanding of other countries. I think that they see... Yeah, they're least bothered and least aware about the happenings and the uh, situation in the other part of the world. Too, far too uh, uh, knowledgeable about what's happening elsewhere in the world. And, and part of our purpose is to make sure that there is a greater international understanding among young people in the UK, as well, of course, of building links with countries in, uh, elsewhere. Um, uh, so I think that that is another aspect of it. And of course the media at the moment is always full of bad news. Yes. Um, it's, it's your fault. <laughs> yes, not fault, but we're just covering the happenings, the, what is the current situations around the world. That's absolutely right, and I understand that. Um, but uh, I think people have to be able to understand what the media is doing, the, the, interpret the stories against an, under, a, a, an understanding of the reality. And part of our purpose is to make sure that there is that sophistication, that sophisticated understanding of the reality, which allows people to interpret what they see in the media and read in the media. Um, that those stories of um, uh, extremism, they're true, but they're not the totality. They're not the reflective of the whole of society. That those stories of poverty, of course, are true, but they're not representative of the totality of a society. Do you think that the um, you mentioned the uh, mounting distrust in um, between the people across mm. the countries, especially uh, if I say that the um, in Iraqi soil, what has been happening and the role of the United Kingdom in Iraqi soil um, that inflicted uh, serious damage of trust? Uh, uh, do, you con uh, do you agree with that? I think that the uh, the international situation, um, I Iraq is obviously part of it, but it is only in a part, um, has has caused much greater distrust. Um, it's caused a polarization of views. Um, and one of the problems when you have polarized views, when you have people who have very strong views on one side and very strong views on the other, is it becomes increasingly difficult to get an understanding. Um, and part of our purpose is to try and make sure that those, not, not, not to, to change people's minds, but to get conversations going so that people can actually uh, understand their points of view better. What worries me is when people don't have conversations, don't talk to each other. Um, that, I think, is very dangerous. I think it's dangerous for the world. So you think that uh, British Council can uh, role a strong, uh, play a strong role in promoting mutual understanding? That's, that's our fundamental job. Our fundamental job is to promote mutual understanding by building strong relationships between the people in other countries and the UK. 
And it's for our mutual benefit. You know, mutual understanding is, is great, but it's also got to be for a purpose. And that must be reciprocal. And it must be reciprocal. And it must take into account the circumstances, the real life circumstances in countries where we're working, as well as the real life circumstances in the UK. Uh, Martin, tell me about something, your global exchange program uh, that you have planned that uh, uh, I found that one is community service volunteers, so one mm. is voluntary service overseas and uh, local partners, some um, uh, citizens initiatives like yes. that, and young power in social actions. A lot of programs are there. All these are new programs from the British Council? These are new programs. Um, Global Exchange um, is a program I'm very proud of, and I was really privileged yesterday to meet the uh, nine young volunteers who are going, they're actually going to uh, uh, London this weekend. Um, it's all a, are selected from Bangladesh. All selected from Bangladesh. And what's unique about this program is instead of bringing volunteers from overseas to Bangladesh, and there are lots of programs that do that, and they're very valuable, this is actually taking volunteers from Bangladesh and taking them to Britain. And they'll be working with British volunteers together for three months, and then they will come back together to work together um, here in Bangladesh. Um, and for me why it's important is that, first of all, it demonstrates that the problems aren't all in Bangladesh and we've got it all right in Britain. Of course that's not true. We have lots of social problems in Britain. And having volunteers from overseas working with British volunteers on that, I think is really power a really powerful statement of the unity of young people. Um, it provides an opportunity for those young people to understand the real life circumstances in each other's countries much more. And I hope it also provides uh, an opportunity for those young volunteers from Bangladesh to learn uh, new skills um, which they're going to be able to apply when they come back here but also uh, opportunity for the volunteers from the UK to learn more skills, new skills when they come here. So it's a really positive program. For me the greatest problem is it's too small. We yes. have to make it much bigger if we're going to have a real impact. Uh, uh, Martin, uh, uh, one thing I would like to know from uh, uh, that, uh, you know, in some particular areas like in education, employment, access to the global opportunities and cultural relations, young people, policy makers in some particular countries faces a lot of challenges. Mm. How British Council can uh, stand by them and uh, promote uh, and to face the challenges? I think we have to be careful that we don't pretend to do, that we can do more than we actually can. Yes. Uh, we're a small organization and our job is to build those relationships we were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, but I think that for me uh, there are two things that we can do. Um, uh, first of all, it's helping young people um, meet their aspirations um, and they have all, all sorts of aspirations, they have personal aspirations and things like English language teaching and access to English language is really important for them. Um, the ability to learn new skills is really important to them. Um, and the British Council can help in that. But also, young people everywhere in the world are idealistic. They also have ambitions for their society. And part of what we have to do is also help them understand the role that they can play in building their own society. We, it's not for us to say what they, they should do, that's up to them. But what we can do is provide them some of the skills and the contacts and the relationships which help them become active players in their own society. And that ultimately is, is the role of the British Council. Oh, that's great. Uh, but another thing is um, how British Council can play its role in positive social changes. Mm. Um, I, I know that you have some programs on change social. Yes. Um, we have a particular program which we call Active Citizenship, which is about uh, uh, helping uh, people understand the way in which they can become part of, of a, a, their community and, and uh, uh, take a positive uh, part in their community. What is the role of a citizen within their community? And that, I think, is an important aspect of social change. Um, uh, also, uh, I think we want to be able to provide an opportunity for those, those young people to gain more, uh, more skills, including leadership skills. Um, so programs like uh, the Global Exchange Program we were just talking about is all about providing, is building skills um, and allowing people to become active citizens in their own country. The volunteers who are selected from Bangladesh, they, they would be working with the um, uh, British, uh, British Council workers in um, the UK? They'll be working, they'll be working with uh, volunteers, British volunteers, um, who've been selected partly by the British Council and partly by VSO, which is our volunteer organisation. Um, and then they will come back to Bangladesh together so that they work in pairs and they will work, they work both in... Uh, is it an annual program or...? 
Is it annual program? It's six months. So it's three months in the UK, three months in, in Bangladesh. Oh, uh, on the other hand, the British volunteers will also come. Yeah. Okay. So they will work together here. Mm -hmm. That's uh, interesting. But um, uh, any, any plan to expand the British Council program in Bangladesh? Yeah, I think there absolutely is. Um, we, we were talking earlier about how important the relationship is between the UK and Bangladesh. I think that we have allowed our program become, to become too small and we've allowed it to become too focused just on English language. English language is very important for us um, and I don't want to suggest that we won't continue to work on that. But there are a number of areas I want to focus on. I want to, uh, us to uh, move away from simply teaching English directly to a small number of people to providing much more assistance in the teaching of English in the public school system. Now, we're not going to pretend we can do that right across the country, we're too small. But working with teachers and providing resources for teachers and training for teachers I think is something that we can do and we will be putting effort into that. Do you, th do you think any, 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 any policy support needed to uh, strengthen the English teacher's ability in Bangladesh? I think that we want to look right across the board at, at the, the, all the issues which, which affect the access of young Bangladeshis to English because English is important uh, as a, uh, a tool uh, for young people. Um, it's uh, a tool for their uh, future success because it provides new skills, it's a tool for international communication, it's a tool for uh, social mobility. Uh, all of those things I think are important. Um, I think that we have a particular role in the area of teacher training and providing uh, skills for teachers, um, better materials for teachers, um, and we are certainly willing to have discussions with uh, uh, the authorities um, here on issues of policy, but really that is up to the Bangladesh authorities to decide whether or not they want to see those opportunities. Any joint collaboration uh, initiative uh, between British Council and uh, Bangladesh government or any Bangladeshi government agencies? At the moment there isn't, but this is something which we're talking about and we would hope to, to uh, develop more in the future. Um, other areas that we want to develop, um, school links, we have a very active uh, program of school links. Um, this isn't just about creating pen pals, useful though that is, but about providing shared areas of study. Um, how can we actually uh, ensure that uh, students in Bangladesh are sharing with students in the UK um, on common areas? And there are some very obvious ones. Um, the whole question of climate change and the environment. Uh, getting people in Britain to understand what that means for a country like Bangladesh getting people in Bangladesh to also understand what it means both for themselves but also for countries like mine I think is a really positive area. But what that does is also form strong links, strong relationships between the students who take part in that. At the moment the programme is too small. We have, to, we have it in a small, maybe uh, a dozen schools or so. It has to become a programme which works in a hundred schools or a thousand schools, not just a small number. Um, and I think the third area which I would highlight is the whole question of technical and vocational education, um, a key area of development. Now we're not a development agency, we can't, we have, uh, the British but government it, has a development you agency. you can put forward your recommendation and We can put for, what we can do is help uh, uh, Bangladeshi authorities um, understand the uh, potential this area and develop their own ideas um, and that seems to me to be a role that we can play. But in one more, w one thing that um, you, you may know that Bangladeshi, a lot of Bangladeshi students faces difficulties and the local British High Commission refusing visas for different reasons, mm -hmm. uh, say uh, the processing of papers are not, uh, a a adequate papers are, are not s uh, being provided. So uh, what British Council um, uh, can um, can play their role to support and stand by the students who are refusing frequently visas from the British High Commission? It's a very important question. Um, of course we can't interfere in individual cases. Uh, we, we don't have the knowledge or understanding. What we do do is, is work closely with uh, our authorities in the UK, the Home Office in the UK who, have, uh, who manage the visa situ uh, position and as well as with colleagues in the High Commission to try and make the system as easy as it possibly can be for young people across the world to gain British visas. Um, and uh, I, I sit on uh, various committees in London which look at the visa, the visa position. As you know, our visa uh, processes are changing. Um, my job is to make sure that those visa processes are as simple as possible to allow those who have the uh, right qualifications and the right motivation 
to be able to go to Britain as easy as they possibly can. So, in particular, did you discuss this matter with the, uh, the High Commissioner in Bangladesh? I didn't discuss it this time, but it is part of the, the ongoing discussion, and I know my colleagues based here are in regular discussion with the, the High Commission on, on that uh, subject. So, uh, did you meet any, any, any policy makers in Bangladesh? Sadly, I haven't yet. Um, I hope that this evening uh, uh, we will be having an IFTA uh, celebration this evening. I hope to be able to meet some uh, policy makers at that. Um, my visit here has been far too short. I knew it was going to be short, but as soon as I got here, I knew it was going to be much, much too short for all the things I should be seeing here. Um, all I can say is it gives me an appetite to come back again in the future. So any, any distant plan to visit Bangladesh? I, I don't have plans at the moment, but what I do understand is I've got a better understanding of uh, two things. First of all, why the uh, relationship between Bangladesh and the UK is important. And secondly, the way in which my organization can make a contribution to strengthening those relationships in the future. So um, uh, one last question, says so uh, you have been working uh, in British Council for uh, more than two decades. Mm. So it's a huge, uh, long uh, career in British Council. So um, tell us about uh, your overall observations of working with uh, British Council around the world. Um, I, of course, feel that my organization is a fantastic one. I feel passionately about what we do, and that is about building long-term relationships, which are of value, and they're of value to my country, but they're also of value to the countries where we work. I also recognize the way in which the world changes, and we have to, as an organization, change to meet those new circumstances. If I, of course, uh, there are frustrations working for the Brit with the British Council. Um, my most imp the most important shift and change that I want to make is that we become more focused on what young people around the world want of us and that we become more capable of responding to that quickly. So a faster, more flexible organization is what I hope to build. Uh, we, we hope that you would meet your goal. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much for Thank coming. you for inviting me on today. We have a pleasure. Thank you very much. Dear viewers, as Martin Davidson observed that he is keen to explore the role of British Council can play more to support positive social changes in Bangladesh through collaborative efforts and programs that build young people's skills, develop institutional capacity and build greater mutual understanding between the people of Bangladesh and United Kingdom. We thank you indeed for joining us and invite to watch our next episode with some other new guests. Until then, goodbye and take care.